Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior. His name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, in who I reverence and honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days okay this lesson it needs to be done because it needs to warn the brothers and the scriptures talk about what being your brother's keeper right so if you see something you're going to say something so let's go to Matthew 25 okay because if you're not bringing up your scriptures that means you don't love your brother let's go to Matthew 25 right and go get straight you know we're going to start at 14 for the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling to a far country and that man be likened unto Yahweh Shai and we are what them them householders that are looking after the, the house we have been those that have been entrusted with what that property right who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods what would the goods be right this word so this, this word is precious, this word is goods. A lot of men don't see it that way, right? And unto one he gave five talents. And that word from talent in the Greek, I believe is talent, talentios, talentios, of worth, of weight. So you may have thought, you may have low self-esteem and say, well, I don't have no worth. Um, no, you have worth, right? Don't let anybody tell you any different. The moment you have a wakes you up to this truth, you have some worth, right? When you go into the word talent, let me just see if I can get it up. Um, talent, value, see value from talentius. Okay, talentium. Okay, so yes, you have a talent, right? And unto another, okay, he gave two. Okay, unto one he gave five talents, unto another two, unto another one, to every man according to his several ability. Key thing it says several ability. So there's brothers in the truth, they have several, not one, several abilities. Okay. There's in the, the individual with one talent, that was one ability, but it was still a talent. And that one ability, a state of condition or being able, capacity to do or act. So now you wake up to this truth. Yahweh gives you a talent and a capacity to do a particular thing. Which is what? For the body. And for, first and foremost, for him, you're in the body. Right? Ability, fitness, capacity. So he gives you enough mental capacity to, to, to use these talents. And straightway took his journey. He left. Okay. When he Then he that received the fire talents went and traded... So this truth is about when we getting it, trading it, okay, not keeping it to ourselves, right? And that's what people do with gold. What do they do with gold? Trade, buy and sell, right? With any type of merchandise, what do they do? They trade. And when you go into that word trade, meaning to occupy oneself, okay, so what are we going to be occupied in? What this word, okay? And it says, bear me just a minute, bear me just a minute. And likewise, he received another five talents, so he made, what, ten? He doubled, okay? And likewise, he that received two, he also gained another two, which would lead to, what, four? But he that received one and went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. So you had that one. He had the talent. Excuse me. But for some reason, this is individuals that look at the truth like, well, it doesn't really mean anything. Okay, so he dig that talent in the earth, digged it, hid it. He 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 he. What do you call it? Salt. He sold that talent and sold it in the earth, right? And hid his lord's money. That's crazy. Someone's given you something of worth to use it to double upon it, and you hide it. And you know what this really goes into? This goes into a mindset of this individual. He wasn't grateful. He didn't really understand what he was a part of. And you have men that do this. They might even have talents, but 
They don't do anything. They don't use it. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And you notice how he, was, he didn't sound upset. He done what he was supposed to do. And he doubled, right? His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. So yes, that's a good and faithful servant, a reliable servant. That has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord Jehovah Shai. And the joy of the Lord Jehovah Shai is that we're looking to enter in. Which is what them chariots. Which is what pertains to salvation. And he also that received two talents. Came and said Lord Jehovah Shai. Thou delivers unto me. Two talents. Right. Behold I have gained two other talents beside him. Right. So the individual had two, he gained what four? And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Good and faithful, reliable. That has been faithful over a few things that will make the ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord Jehovah Shai. Then he that was received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that art a hard man. Here we go. Okay, reap when that has not sown and gathering when that has not strawed. So if this man knew this, that would move you. If you really, really fear someone, and the scripture says, Through the right, tell the Lord you have shall we persuade men. If you really fear someone, you're going to do what they say. Right? So this individual, he never really feared you have a shy. That was just flattery. Alright? Right? Because, why do we push this word? Because we fear you have a shy. Okay? What would happen if we don't? Then he that received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that art a hard man, reap him that has not sown, and gather him that has not strawed. Okay? And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. So from him being afraid, that should have been the motivation. That fear should have been the motivation. What you know what? I've got to do something with this talent. Okay, Lord there, that is thine. He went and gave it back. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant so this is basically showing you what you are if you have if you have this truth we know you're going to have those that come in the last hour those that don't have any any works at all this ain't referring to them because they they never that was the last hour okay they were of the elect but they never had no works but again this is to those that know better that have been called to what to minister. Right? I've heard men tell me, oh, it's crazy. This the stuff I've heard men tell me. Years pass. Oh, it doesn't really matter. You know? And they'll go straight to Matthew 7 and 24 and say, Well, in that in that day, many shall say, Lord, Lord, we've done many for Yes, of course. We've done many for wonderful works, cast out devils in thy name. And he'll say, depart from me. Yeah, because they were wicked. They were deceitful. And you don't want to fall in that category of being wicked and deceitful. So that scripture already even applies to this also. A wicked and slothful servant. I've had men that, that have told me this to try and throw me off from doing the work. It's crazy how men would twist the scriptures to not do the work. And this is why a lot of men are going to be destroyed. Lest they repent. Some of the stuff that men would tell you, you're doing too much, um, they would quote Matthew 7, 24, many good works. That's not applying to the hopeful elect. That's applying to those that were wicked, that were deceitful. Okay? That didn't have true brotherly love. That's who that's applying to. Okay? So that's a wicked and slothful servant. And what's a slothful servant? Go into that word slothful. Unresponsive, slothful. You just you just like a dead a dead um spirit. You have no spirit about you. You're just a dead corpse. And that's why now I look back at particular things. I see everything that Yahweh was doing. I see because if you're a man that's really fervent and passionate about this truth, and you really care, if you're amongst others that don't really care, that may hold you back. But you can't let that happen. And when you go into that word, bear me just a minute. It says imposter, cheat, cheat. So men with a slothful um, slothful prophets they're imposters because they're not sincere and yes you can get them times they, there's going to be times where brothers are slothful but you need to snap out of it cheat fatah 
Um, that's dealing with the French. I don't want to go into the French. Evil doer, slothful person. And that's that's um interesting why it says evil doer because you being slothful, you end up becoming what evil. Yahushua puts evil spirits upon you, right? Cowardly, in the face of danger or harm or pain, right? Slothful. Sense of slowness. Empty, void, vain, worthless, useless. That's what it means to be useless. Because you were not using the talents that Yahweh gave you. And a talent, you're not, if you have a talent, you're not useless. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lazy person, have a labor. Because I'm sure when Esau calls you to do something, you're, 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 you're up early in the morning for that. For eat. See, I don't want to get angry now. See, you see what I mean? I'm sure, I'm sure you can do that. Okay, to get your wages and so forth, but you can't do the same thing for your house. I'm sure when your woman um calls you to do something, I'm sure you go running under her under her. You're fast to do that. Cater to your woman. But you can't do nothing for your house. Come on. Let's go back to Matthew's twenty um twenty-five and let's go straight to Where's we? Unbelievable, unbelievable, and the, the 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 reason in certain men have as well the excuses. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants reckoneth with them, and so he that had five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, "Lord, deliver something me five talents. Behold, I've gained beside other five talents more." And his Lord said unto him, "Well done, good and faithful servant. That's been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many." Things which represents what the kingdom of heaven. That's what we want to be ruler over. Joint rulers with Yahweh Shai in the kingdom. Enter into the joy of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. And it's even telling you, enter. So these are going to be the ones that enter into the joy of the Lord, that enter into them chariots. Those that done what Yahweh Shai said. So this cut this really cuts that Matthew 7 and 24 when it comes to the elect. They're not going to be in that stead. Of saying, oh, why not beamed up? Why? Because they were doing the things that were what necessary that Yahushua asked them to do. Right? Well done, and good faithful servant has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord Yahushua. You also that have received two talents came and said, Lord, that delivers unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside him. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good. And faithful servant that has been faithful over a few things that will make the ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord Yahabashai. When he that received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that I had to harden reaping when I was not sown, gathering when I was not strawed, and I was afraid of when I hid that talent in the earth. See, I have to read this again. And there that is dying, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, I knew it's where I reap while I sold not. I had to read that twice. I didn't even realize I was reading this twice. Okay. And gather where I have not strawed. The altars, therefore, to put my money to the exchanges, and then I come in. I have received my own with usury. Right, usury is when you get it back double fold. Take therefore that, and the, the scriptures are against um usury as well. Okay, loaning something can um adding on top of that. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have what ten talents. So this is what happens in the truth. I've had men that I was laboring with at one point of time. They fell out, and as soon as they fell out, the Lord gave me <laughs> one individual, the Lord gave me his talents, his talents directly. So Yahweh can give do that as well, give you what an extra portion, a double portion of the spirit, which what Elisha prayed for when Elijah went back to the heaven. So that happens. When men fall out, what they had is now given to you, and they go back into the world. That's why certain brothers, they increase. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. Okay, this ain't a place of um, ignorance. Me not knowing what I'm saying. I've seen it. Use them talents. And take the talent from him. And give it unto him which have ten talents. For unto everyone that have shall be given, which is what they're understanding. And he shall have an abundance. But from him that shall not, that have not, shall be taken away. Even that he have, the little that he has will be taken away. Right, and cause you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and that's why certain men they lose the oil. Right, 
And cast you down, prophet of seven, into outer darkness. There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the son of man shall come in his glory and the holy angels with him. And that gnashing of teeth are going to be what? Distress, anguish. And he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered the nations. He shall separate one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set his sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. The goats are going to be reserved for destruction. The sheep are going to be reserved for what? Deliverance. Okay, this is a serious thing. We need to keep your eyes single. Okay, and that's spiritual that Yahweh shall have me going over that scripture twice. So he really wants me to drum it in. Now let's go to, bear me just a minute. And these are some of my favorite scriptures as well. Let me just a minute. Go to Ecclesiasticus. 33 and 27. Now, before we go to that, let's quickly go to Romans. You know? These were scriptures when I was amongst particular men. I was bringing out these scriptures, and men tried to stop me from bringing out these scriptures. They actually tried to stop me. They actually told me, don't go into these scriptures. Don't bring this out. Just go into prophecy. Well, this is this is prophecy. This is of how we're supposed to be in these last days. What spirit we're supposed to have. It's unbelievable. Men are fighting against the Holy Spirit. Oh man. Let's go to Romans 12. It's unbelievable. Okay. And that's why Yahweh really has to be with you to continue to do this work. Let's go to Romans 12. This is Romans 12. And we're going to go straight to... 11 not slothful in business right not slothful in business right and this is Yahweh Yahweh's business as well what did he say when he went to his um when he was in Jerusalem and his parents were looking for him okay we can go into that okay not slothful in business but fervent in the spirit fervent is intense intense fervent goes from that word zealous when you go into that word zealous it goes into fervent so you want to be zealous, ze um, zealous for Yahweh Yahushai. And why did Yahweh Yahushai turn them tables when the wicked chief priests and Pharisees were making merchandise? Because he was zealous for what Yahweh Yahushai, for the Heavenly Father, Salakia. Right? Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord Yahweh Yahushai. So when it says fervent, not slothful in business, bear me just a minute. This is Luke 2 and 49. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Was he not that I must be about my father's business? This is when Yahweh was a young man. And his parents left Jerusalem. Okay. At that feast at that time. And Yahweh was amongst the, what, the doctors of the law. And when they came back to inquire of Yahweh He said, Don't, didn't you know I'm about my father's business? So yes, this is a business. The most important business we're involved in. The most important thing that you're left in charge with. And you just go and treat the truth like that. Men don't really value this truth. They value the world. They value their woman. Okay. They value the things of the world. They value their job. They, their J-O-B. This is the most important job. When your house comes back, he ain't going to be asking you how much shekels did you make for, for um, Esau. He ain't going to be asking them. He ain't going to be asking you that. Well, how much, um, how much hours was you working for Esau? Did you make extra money to feed your family? No. What we're finding out, men, they put the carnal things first so they don't grow in the spirit. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Prayer is fundamental. Distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality. So when we get this truth, we're here to give it out. Not to hoard it up to ourselves. Bless them which persecute you. And if the spirit of Yahweh is upon you, you're going to be persecuted by your own people. Bless and curse not. So we, we bless them with what this word. And if they're wicked, that's going to be, become a curse to them eventually. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Knowing your audience, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not higher things, things that are above your pay grade. But condescend to men of lower state. Get yourself to their level. Be not wise in your own conceits. Right? So now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes 33 and 27. Man, yeah, all right. I've heard it many times. I've seen men fall out because most of the time when I've seen men fall out, it's because 
their job, their, their, their J-O-B. We all have to do stuff. Even I, there's particular things I have to do, right? But I still make time for the, the work of your way have a shy, right? The certain men that may have a little bit more time on their hands, certain men less time. But what I'm finding out, especially when I go into the highways and byways, when I come back, when I do these lessons, it's like, by the time I finish these lessons, it's nearly the end of the day. So, again, it's like a lot of things. You have to fit in time to do different things. But don't use that as an excuse of why you can't do the work. You're tired. Okay, anybody can say that. I, well, you think I'm not tired. I get tired, but you still push through. Okay. Because I'm sure when you get home, I'm sure you, you have something to eat after you, after you work. You have something to eat. You cook some food. I'm sure you wash, right? And the scripture says, how shall a man cleanse his um, ways? By what? Take, or by a washing of the water of the word. So I'm sure you wash. I'm sure you have a shower or a bath. So what's stopping you from washing yourself with this word? What's stopping, what's stopping you from eating, digesting this word? There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 33 and 27. Let's go to verse um, 25. If thou set thy servant to labour, thou shalt find rest. Right, because he's gonna, Lord willing, is gonna be doing, okay, what you've told him to do, and it's a weight off that master's shoulder. So you're gonna find some rest. But if thou let him go idle, he shall seek liberty. He shall seek to do something else. A yoke and a collar, which is this truth. Do bow the neck. So this truth is supposed to. It's supposed to be a yoke and a collar, right? So are the tortures and torments for an evil servant. So when you hear stuff end up happening to particular individuals in this truth why because it says tortures and torments for an evil servant so an evil servant the lord yahweh might might start sending you apparitions spirits your way because what you're an evil servant you see how all these scriptures come come together and tortures and torments he might plague your mind send him to labor and this is both Physical work and spiritual work, but I always put the spiritual things first. Send him to labor, that he be not idle, for, for idleness teacheth much evil. So, the times when you're idle, the times I've been idle in this truth, you, you're, 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 I ain't single and it becomes what? Evil. Because this world is evil. Right? Set him to work as it is fit for him. If he be not obedient, put more heavy fetters, put more labor on him. But be not excessive to be not excessive toward any. Don't be over the top. Don't be a tyrant. And without discretion, do nothing. If thou have a servant, let him be unto thee as thyself. Treat him as yourself. There's even laws how to do with a servant as well. Because that has brought him with a price. And a thing in Israel, do you do know we had servants? Yes, even of our own nation. Okay, in yards, my, my, my grandma has servants. She's always had servants. You can have servants, right? Of your own nation, not just the, of your own nation, right? And the scriptures talk about the law of a servant. If he doesn't want to leave his servants, you um, you have something called an al in his ear, and he pierces his ear. That's um, a sense of what ownership, right? But you're supposed to let your servant go for what seven years, which was the same of what Laban and Jacob. Jacob had to walk what uh, a total of what fourteen years. What was it for them women? I forgot their names. Okay, but it says if they have a servant, entreat him as a brother. Okay, don't stop with that tyrannical rubbish, right? Because then men are gonna see you as a tyrant and they go run away from you. Oh, uh, they're not gonna wanna be around you. There's a particular way you have to do it. For thou hast need of him as thy own soul. If thou entreat him evil, and he shall run from thee. See, that's a spirit. Which way would thou go to seek him? You're not going to find him again. Okay? And it's, it's the same if you have a shy. And he's entreating us. But the thing is, you can't run away from your have a shy. And if you do, look what happened to Jonah. If you're a man of the Lord, you have a way have a shy. See, that's another topic. Look what happened to Jonah. He got swallowed up. Okay? He got swallowed up. Okay, and spat out back to shore and he had to do the work. So Yahweh will make it away, 
If you are the elect, he's going to make a way where you're going to do this work. You can't escape. Let's go to Matthew 6. We're going to shut up. Okay. Let's go to Matthew 6 and let's go straight to 22. Okay. The light, if the body is the eye, and if the whole eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Right? So it's going to show. Okay. But if the eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. And that evil, a lot of the time, is through what? Idleness, not thinking about the truth. Read. At least read a chapter a day. I need to read more. Right? That body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? That means you've been overwhelmed, overcome by what the darkness of this world. Okay? But the scriptures are here. The scriptures are that light. So wouldn't, wouldn't you want to cleave onto that light? Hmm? Yes, the answer is yes. So with this lesson, I really hope this is edifying. And until the next time, shalom.